Hello, 8th grade, and welcome to the video lecture for section 1-2 in your book. And this is going to be on how we write chemical equations. So, so far this chapter, we've talked about chemical and physical reactions. And from here on out, we're kind of focusing on the chemical reaction part of it. So in this part, it's all about um, how the change is happening. So we've looked at signs of, of chemical reactions and things like that, but now we're going to go more into um, breaking down the parts and how we can tell what's happening before and after based on um, how it's written, how the chemical formula is written. That's what this is all about, how we interpret, you know, what does H2O mean? That's a chemical formula for water. What does it all mean? That's the focus of today. So we got our vocab here first, get that out of the way. So we talk about chemical equations. A chemical equation is a shorthand description of a chemical reaction using chemical formulas and symbols. So H2O. Um, when we have a chemical reaction, we have certain parts. Anything on the left-hand side, <clears throat> we call those your reactants. Sometimes they're called the raw materials. There are these starting materials in the chemical reaction. What's on the left is what you start with before the reaction. Then you have your products. Um, that's the substance that is formed at the end of the reaction. So that's on the right-hand side. I always think, think of products. I think of when you multiply two numbers together, your answer is a product. It's what you end up with. So when we're writing or reading the chemical formula, there's different parts. We've got a subscript. In a subscript, it's always written to the right and below the symbol of the element. It can never be changed. I cannot change this 2 over here for H2O. If I change that, I have something totally different. So it tells how many atoms of the element are present. Present, excuse me. So for hydrogen, it tells me I have two hydrogen atoms. Another number that is often used is a coefficient. So a coefficient is a number placed in front of a chemical symbol or formula. They are used when balancing a chemical equation because a subscript can never be changed. So like how many molecules of water are involved in a certain chemical reaction? That's what that coefficient tells you. It tells you how many molecules you have. So my coefficient might be something like this. I've got H2O right here. And if there's a, a, a 2 in front of it, it would tell me I had two H2O molecules. And if I broke that down a little bit more, you know, how many to total atoms do I have? The way you think about it here is, to figure out that amount of hydrogen, I multiply the coefficient, that's this number right here, times the subscript, this number here, to get the total number of atoms in there. So 2 times 2 gives me 4. So now I still got this 2 is like for the whole formula, for oxygen over here also. And you notice oxygen doesn't have a subscript. We assume it's always going to be 1. If it's written down, it's at least 1. These are real things. So we assume there's a 1 right there. So it'd be 2 times 1 gives me 2 atoms in this uh, formula here. Okay. So here's kind of a way to put this in perspective, looking at a real chemical formula and reaction here for combining hydrogen and oxygen to get water. So over here, guys, you know, this H2 combined together, that would be one of our molecules. Um, anything here on the left-hand side, kind of in this bracket here, and those are the reactants. A lot of times you see like a G or an L, that'd be if it's a gas or if it's a liquid. You might have other things for solids there. Um, on this side, the arrow again, that's when the reaction is taking place. So that's like if you were burning a piece of wood, this would be the burning part right here. When you mix baking soda and vinegar, this is when they're mixing, is that reaction is happening. And so afterwards you get your product. So it tells you over here. You can see everything from the coefficient that'd be out in front to our subscript that's down here. So it's kind of a good way. I want you to put this in your notes because this is a good kind of example of what uh, those different parts of our chemical formulas. So when we do this, guys, kind of another example of we, I want you to really think about how we count atoms. It's all about counting atoms, make sure we got the right number in a chemical formula. What does it all mean? So here I've got three H2. And so let's say my coefficient, and that's the number out in front, is 3. Our subscript is 2. And so there's a couple other things here. The number of molecules. The number of molecules, that'd be if I could put a circle on this H2, I've got 3 H2 molecules. Now, to find the total number of atoms, and that's probably the most important part most for a lot of this, is you multiply that coefficient times the subscript. So 3 times 2 would give me 6 atoms of hydrogen. So I'd make sure you put this all in your notes too. Have that in there. Really understand how to count 
the number of atoms in that formula is very important to know. So one more thing here, guys, I want you to write down. And this is kind of a lead-in to the next unit here, too. There's a law of conservation of energy and also matter. It says mass, or like atoms, think of hydrogen, oxygen, is neither created or destroyed in ordinary physical or chemical reactions. They might be rearranged, but they're still there. So if you go back to the example from before, you know, there's so many hydrogen and oxygen going in, and there's the same number of atoms afterwards. Now, they were rearranged and shuffled, but that same amount of atoms is on both sides of the equation. We'll talk more about in, that in class. So I thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys along the way.